brace yourself, folks. The housing market is about to face one of the biggest shakeups yet. Yes, it's all because of one man, the disturber in chief, and you guessed it, Donald J. Trump. Now, as you all know by now, he has been reelected. He is the president elect. And when he returns to office, we might be looking at everything from lowering taxes to boosting inventory to, well, spiking interest rates and policy whiplash. So if you're wondering, should I buy or should I sell my house before things get wild? Buckle up because you're in the right place. All right, let's rewind for a second. We've seen this movie before. Trump was recently president. And whether you loved it or hated it, the plot twist kept coming and he shook things up. Remember the tax cuts and jobs acts? Well, tax rates dropped and the economy sped up and your paycheck was a little fatter. Unless you were in a high cost state, in which case, I don't know what to tell you. You see, back then, Trump also rolled back a bunch of regulations. He trimmed the financial and environmental red tape and even cut parts of the Dodd-Frank Act, which made it easier for lenders to approve loans. Now, what does that mean for you? The translation is more buyers in the housing market and more demand. Good times, right? Well, for most of us. So what has Trump been cooking up if he gets another four years, which we've now found out he has. He's been elected to get another four years. Let me break that down for you. First up, taxes. Trump made it crystal clear that he loves low taxes. And if you let him tell it, it's going to be the lowest taxes ever. But let's be honest, that extra disposable income with lowering taxes could be a game changer for housing affordability. Let's talk about ramping up deregulation, which means builders can build faster and loans might be a bit easier to get approved. Now I'm not saying that all these new constructions are gonna be luxury homes, but if red tape is holding up construction, well, that means more construction can get done because there'll be less red tape. But let me temper our expectations. I don't wanna get hopes up too high, too fast. If you've been around, the past four to eight years, we all know how things go. If there is more buyers in the market, that means there's more demand. And more buyers, more demand, meaning more price hikes. Prices go up because of limited inventory. Now, yes, there may be more building, but I think we understand that houses can't be built overnight. So it will take time for those houses to be built if that red tape is cut back. Now let's look at the other side of the coin. Let's talk about deportation and immigration policies. You see, Trump's stand here hasn't exactly been a secret. Fewer immigrants could mean more housing inventory since theoretically there's less demand. But here's the plot twist. Remember, I said he's the disruptor in chief. Everything happens at a whirlwind pace when it comes to Trump. And even if progress isn't made, the fact that he creates so much chaos makes it feel like you're in a vortex almost. But back to the plot twist. Immigration also supplies a ton of labor that builds these houses. Imagine this, you've got all this land ready for homes, blueprints spread out on the table, and then you don't hear the hammer swinging. You don't have anyone laying concrete. You don't see the drywall going up. The windows, they're not being delivered. Well, suddenly your construction costs spike. Well, because of supply and demand. Americans could build a home, but will they? Or will they want more pay than the immigrants that were building homes? And what does that mean for you, the end consumer? Higher home prices because the construction costs spiked because there's less people in the service industry to build those homes. So next time you hear about deportation policies, think of it as a two for one. Fewer buyers, but also fewer builders. Now this one really gets me. Let's talk about infrastructure investments and tariffs. All right, so this one sounds good on paper. Infrastructure investment. Jobs are created, communities get stronger, and theoretically, housing demand rises because of these stronger communities and more jobs. But there's a catch. Trump has always been big on tariffs, 
And here's one thing that gets a little dicey when it comes to tariffs. Now remember, we're talking about housing materials, building materials, and tariffs on imports, especially building materials, drive up construction costs. Let's say you're building a house. You need lumber, steel, concrete. Guess who's paying for all of those high prices? Yep, that's us, the consumer. Who remembers back when lumber costs skyrocketed? I do. I was in the market. I was actually helping people buy and sell during that time. Because let's face it, companies don't just eat that cost. They pass it along to the end consumer. So you want more homes? Amazing. Just be ready to pay more for them. More for them because there's lack of supply of workers because of the immigration policy and because of the extra cost because of the taxes or tariffs on imports. So if you thought new construction was expensive now, please just wait. Now bear with me because I'm about to get a little nerdy. This is where I actually love to be in the nerd lane. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, yes, real names, not cartoon characters. Those are both government sponsored enterprises that buys and guarantee mortgages. You see, Donald Trump wants to release them from conservatorship, meaning they would operate more independently from government policies. So what does that actually mean for you? Well, it could mean more financial stability and innovation, and ideally a smoother mortgage process. But if things go wrong, we're back into a 2008 scenario where Fannie and Freddie takes too many risks. And we all know what happened around 2008, the great financial crisis. And we know how that turned out. And it wasn't exactly like the happy ending we we're hoping for. So the ultimate question is, will these policies hurt or help us as a society? So here's the bottom line. Many of Trump's policies aims to boost the economy. And we know he's a businessman, or so he likes to tell us. He likes growth, low taxes, and economic booms. But a growing economy also means higher interest rates could stick around. Higher interest rates, people. Higher interest rates. That's not exactly great for those of us hoping for a 4 or 5% mortgage rate again. See, when the economy is booming, the Fed has to keep inflation in check. Jerome Powell often said that they want a soft landing. Lower inflation without a total economic crash. And right now, they're doing a pretty decent job at that. Their target inflation rate is 2%, and right now they're right between 2 and 3%. But if Trump's policies ramp up growth too much, it could backfire. And I can see interest rates staying high. And that makes it harder for the average American to afford a home. And that is even if there are more homes on the market. So is Trump's potential second term going to make the housing market better or worse? Honestly, it's a mixed bag. You've got policies that could boost affordability and home construction, but other things like tariffs and immigration restrictions and pushing economic growth might end up hurting the very people that voted for him, thinking that he'll change things and turn things around. And that right there is kind of ironic, right? Anyway, if you're a home buyer or home seller, the best advice I can give to you is to stay informed. The housing market is local, hyper local in my opinion, but it is influenced by national policies. And as you know now, sometimes those policies have a way of doing the exact opposite of what they're supposed to do. So what do you think? Do you think Trump's policies will help or hurt the housing market? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and do me a huge favor. Hit that like button and share this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And trust me, I'll be keeping track of all the plot twists as they come. See you next time and happy house hunting, if you dare. Talk soon.